Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new here. For today's video, I'm going to be sharing my current top five favorite tinted sunscreens that make the skin look beautiful. I will say that I have a very wide variety of types of sunscreens here, so I feel like there's going to be a little bit of something for everyone, because some days I'm in the mood for something sheer and glowy and very natural looking on the skin, whereas other days I kind of want my sunscreen to completely replace the need for foundation. So we have all of that covered, different kinds of finishes, levels of coverage, etc. So hopefully at the end of this video, you will find the perfect tinted sunscreen for you and your skin. Before we jump into it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, drop a comment below telling me what your current favorite tinted sunscreen is, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. All of those things really help me out with the YouTube algorithm, so thank you so much for doing that. Instagram and TikTok handle are right here, and my Lightroom preset filters for editing Instagram photos are listed in my description box below, along with discount codes, links, timestamps, and everything else you may need. All right, let's jump into it. Sunscreen number one is the Michelle Dermaceuticals Sun Shield Liquid SPF 50. This is a sunscreen that has one fluid ounce of product and retails for $24, and it's actually available in three different shades. So they have light, light medium, and medium dark. That level of color availability for a tinted sunscreen is actually unfortunately rare because at this point, most tinted sunscreens come in one universal shade, which is just BS because most of them don't match my skin tone. I naturally have very fair skin. I will often be wearing self-tanner in the summer months. So I kind of range between fair to light medium, like light slash medium. That's as deep as I get. And there are a lot of tinted sunscreens that are just too, too dark on my skin. So I can't imagine how frustrating that would be for someone with extra dark skin where it's kind of the opposite problem. So I'm really hoping we start to see better representation for tinted sunscreens across the board from every brand in the future. More like a tinted moisturizer or a foundation like any other cosmetic brand would do because it's just, it's not acceptable. So I really love the fact that we have at least more than one shade available, but in looking at this, it's like, okay, where's the dark to deep? We need something for extra dark skin tones and it's just not there, unfortunately. So the shade that I'm going to be applying in this video is light. That is definitely the best match for my natural skin tone, but I do really like to wear light medium when I have self tanner on because that helps to just kind of balance out my face with my body since I don't self tan my face. So just if you guys were curious, Obviously, again, that's disappointing knowing that I can get away with wearing both of those shades, even though I'm super light. So more shades, please, please. Thank you. So this sunscreen is completely mineral. The only active ingredient is 20% zinc oxide. So if you do find that chemical filters are a little bit irritating to your skin, then this will be a safer bet for you to try out. Also has some nice hydrating and conditioning ingredients like sunflower oleosomes, vitamin E, glycerin, and jojoba esters. The other ingredient that all of these sunscreens have in common is iron oxides. That is amazing because that provides us additional protection against visible light. Really important for those that have hyperpigmentation and melasma. So that is why I love tinted sunscreen so, so much for that extra protection. You guys know me. All right, let's talk formulation. So this is by far the most liquidy formulation out of all of these sunscreens. It's very, very runny, but I love that because it makes for a very lightweight formula that feels nice to blend into the skin and does not look or feel heavy whatsoever. The only downside to it is actually just the packaging. So this is a dropper bottle. And because it is so lightweight and liquidy, even me just holding it up, I wonder if it'll do it here. Yep, I see it coming. And not squeezing the dropper will make a drop of product or several drops escape and come out. And when I'm trying to apply that to the skin, I'll often end up with drops on my shirt and my pants and my floor. So I would actually just recommend applying some to the back of your hand first picking it up that way and then applying it with your hands so that you don't have that mess. But otherwise, I absolutely love this formulation. There's so many sunscreens that are just too heavy, feel cakey, this does not at all. It's easy to blend into the skin, you get minimal streaking, and I love that you get really nice, even consistent coverage without having to be too precise about it. That is definitely not always the case with tinted sunscreen. So I really appreciate that about the formulation. And as far as level of coverage, I would say it's light, to medium. So it starts off light in coverage, but you can definitely build it up to be more medium if you would like it to be. So this is absolutely something for me that can completely replace the need for makeup. And the finish of this is something that I would consider to be natural matte because it's not so matte, matte, matte to where it's dry and leaves you looking kind of flat all day long. This is something that does start to kind of flex as your oils peek through. It starts to look a little bit more natural. So that's why I would consider it to be natural matte, but at the same time, it really doesn't have any 
sort of satiny finish or glowy finish by itself at all. So I would say that this is going to be perfect for those of you that lean oily, that have struggled to find a sunscreen that doesn't make you look oilier and greasier as the day goes on, but also doesn't suck the life out of your skin and make you look completely flat because I don't want to look like that, you know? I want that nice in between. And the last thing I want to call out about this sunscreen is the fact that I really, really enjoy that the shades do lean more neutral than so many other tinted sunscreens that just look orange on the skin. So while I do think that this has a slightly warm undertone, it's not in an orange way whatsoever, and it's something that's going to work for a lot wider range of undertones and something that is super orange. So if you were kind of nervous about that, if you have really cool toned skin, I would actually say that this is one of the better undertones tones for a tinted sunscreen compared to other brands. So that is my Shell Sun Shield. Highly recommend, love this so much. Next up is Elta MD UV Elements. This one is an SPF 44. It has two ounces of product in it and retails for $34.50. And this one is water resistant for up to 40 minutes. This is also completely mineral, but it has 10% zinc oxide and 5.5% titanium dioxide. And other ingredients in this that are nice for the skin include vitamin E and hyaluronic acid. This formulation is something that I would consider to be a whipped lotion. It feels so nice and moisturizing to apply to the skin, definitely more so than my shell, but you do lose the benefit of it being as lightweight as the Michel sunscreen. So kind of just up to personal preference and really depends on what you're looking for in a sunscreen. Feels so, so nice and is definitely not something that I would consider to be heavy or greasy whatsoever. It's kind of just medium as far as the consistency and thickness goes. Also something that blends nicely into the skin. It doesn't go super streaky or patchy and the coverage of this I would say is sheer too light. Again, I do think that it's something that you can build up with multiple applications or reapplication throughout the day, but it's definitely lighter in coverage than my shell. So for those of you that are looking for something that's a little bit more natural on the skin, this will be a better option for you for sure. The only thing about this is because it does lean more sheer at first, you just want to make sure that you're careful with application because anything that's sheer like that, that doesn't have more coverage to give you, it's going to make it more obvious if you have areas that are not perfectly blended. So while I don't think it's difficult to work with by any means, I often will just find with any sunscreen that's tinted that there are certain areas on my face where I'm like oops didn't blend that in perfectly and it's a little bit more obvious because I don't have that even consistent coverage in a fuller way if that makes sense. Finish of this is a little bit tricky for me to explain because I feel like there's not a perfect word for it because it's definitely not matte when you compare this to my shell it's like okay yeah nowhere near as matte as that one but it's also not super glowy and shiny it's kind of something that I would consider to just be natural or maybe satin on the skin where it enhances your skin type in a natural way, but it's not going to make you look shinier or flatter and drier than normal. You know what I mean? But I love that about it. And it's honestly probably, is it my favorite finish out of all of these? Because of that, I hate a sunscreen that makes me look extra greasy. Like I said, I don't want to look flat and dry. So I really, really love this. And I think if you're someone that has combination skin, you have normal skin or you lean slightly dry or slightly oily without being on the extreme end of either of those, this is going to be something that you really gravitate towards for that reason. The only downside to this is that it does only come in one shade and it definitely leans more warm, orangey, and it's a little bit, I would say, darker, definitely darker than that Michel sunscreen, but it's more of like a medium color. So not going to be the most versatile. Hopefully in the future they come out with something that is more versatile and a few more shades, but I make it work and this is something that I wear when I have self tanner on. When I'm super fair, definitely too dark. Next up is the Dermatology Universal Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46. This one has 1.7 ounces of product in it and it retails for $21, which I think is such a great price for this just on its own, but I do also have a 20% off discount link with Dermatology. It's in the description boxes of all of my videos, so if you click through that link, purchase through it, it's no additional cost to you, but you'll see that 20% off applied at your checkout if you would like to use it. You obviously don't have to, but it does make it even cheaper. This is a combination sunscreen. So it has 12% zinc oxide and 7.5% octanoxate. So if you find that that filter is something that often irritates your skin, this will be one that you wanna skip. But otherwise, I think that it makes for such a beautiful formulation, which we will get to. This also has great skin loving ingredients in it. It has niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, vitamin E, and 
knotweed extract, which is a great antioxidant for the skin. This is also a formulation that I would consider to kind of be a whipped lotion, but it's definitely not in the exact same way as Ulta MD UV Elements because I find that it is lighter weight than that. So I would say it's kind of in between my shell and Ulta MD as far as the actual weight or consistency of it, but it feels incredible. I find myself reaching for this constantly just because of how amazing it feels on the skin. So soft, so silky smooth, but feels very moisturizing and hydrating to apply. It's just, I don't know what this witchcraft is, but it works. It's a beautiful application experience, let's just say that. I do have to be a little bit more precise with application with this one, kind of the same thing that I was talking about with Ulta MD UV Elements, but this one is actually even more sheer than that, so I don't feel that you can build this up to be light in coverage. It pretty much stays sheer on the skin, and because of that, I do just have to be extra careful to make sure that everything is fully blended out, but again, it's not something that I find to be difficult to work with or that looks permanently patchy on the skin. You just want to make Make sure that you're being precise with your application. This is a finish that I would definitely consider to be radiant and dewy on the skin. So for those of you that want a sunscreen that makes you just look healthy and glowy, this will be the one for you for sure. If you're super oily, it's probably not going to be a great choice for you because it really does not provide any help in the oil department. But I will say, <clears throat> Excuse me. As somebody that leans oily, it doesn't make me look shiny and greasy. But again, it's definitely not helping out the oil situation. So if you're super, super oily, I think you're gonna be a lot happier with Ulta MD or my shell over this one. Otherwise, the finish really is beautiful. The shade of this one, I would say, leans more neutral than Ulta MD, so I do really like that. Obviously, don't love the fact that it's the only shade that they have, but it's something that's going to suit a wider range of undertones, again, kind of similar to my shell, than Ulta MD, which leans so much more orange. And I would say that this one is kind of light medium as far as the actual depth of color goes. Definitely not fair but definitely not fully medium tan either, kind of somewhere in between. Second to last is Color Science's latest launch. It's their Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield Flex. This is an SPF 50. It's also water resistant for up to 40 minutes, has 1.8 fluid ounces of product in it, and it retails for $36. This one is also completely mineral. It has 12% zinc oxide. And as far as ingredient highlights, I would say that Color Science definitely wins. They have amazing ingredients in all of their sunscreens in this Sun Forgettable range. They have niacinamide in them, lethicin, allantoin, and beastable little snow mushroom extract and other antioxidants to really help to provide further protection. So I would say if you're on the lookout for the best bang for your buck in that department, I personally think Color Science takes the cake. They do actually have four different shades available for this sunscreen. They have fair, medium, tan, and deep. It's interesting because this is called Flex because it's supposed to flex or adapt to your natural skin tone to match your skin tone perfectly. I don't really believe that to be 100% true because I do have two different shades from them. I have fair and medium and neither of them perfectly adapt to my skin tone. So I would just be curious to see how this works on other people. I don't know how much of that pigment is just the only pigment that's there or how much actually does adapt and flex, but the shade that works the best for me when I'm fully fair is the shade fair, but I feel like they need something that's even more fair than that. I would almost consider their fair shade to be more of a light, and then they of course at the very least need at least one shade that's even darker than deep, like a dark shade, because that does not exist, which is very annoying. So. I feel like the color range is not my favorite, but again, I'm happy that they at least have more than one. This formulation is really interesting because on the one hand, it's super liquidy and runny like Elta MD, but you guys can see it's definitely not as lightweight as that. It's much creamier and I would say is more comparable to Elta MD as far as the actual consistency and thickness. It's more just kind of in between. Not the lightest weight I've ever tried, but at the same time doesn't feel heavy on the skin. So this is also something that you can't just slap on and expect to look flawless. I do really have to work with this to make sure that there are no streaks and that it's blended in nicely. It feels very nice on the skin while you're blending though. It feels so moisturizing and soft, but once you work with it, you end up with a really, really pretty result. You actually do get medium to full coverage. So with two applications, I feel like we're kind of just on the border between both of those. 
Very impressive. I've yet to find another SPF 50 that has this amount of coverage and the finish is gorgeous. I'm obsessed with it. It's a really pretty satin matte. Again, it's not something that makes me look shiny or greasy whatsoever, but it's not flat. It's just, this is the kind of finish I look for in every tinted sunscreen. I wish every brand had a sunscreen with this finish because it's so, so nice. The color of this definitely does pull warm on my skin. On the one hand, I have warm toned skin. So if this was kind of holding up to their flex adaptive claim that could be why but my hunch is that this is probably going to pull warm on everybody so you guys will have to let me know in the comments below if you have picked this up if that is the case for you as well do you feel like it's a good match for you or do you feel like that kind of flex thing is maybe not the most accurate i'm curious and if you are torn between the fair and medium shades i did actually post a dedicated review on this product recently that i will list below in that video i show fair on one side of my face and medium on the other so you can really see how they compare hopefully that will help you to figure out which one is going to work better for you and i also do compare this to their original sun forgettable sunscreen so lots of comparisons in that video but if you are curious about any of those things that will be listed below and last is actually another color science sunscreen and my most recent purchase. It's their Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield Matte. So it's also an SPF 50, water resistant for up to 40 minutes, 1.8 fluid ounces of product. This one retails for $39. I think I said this one was 36, but I'm seeing that's actually because it's on sale on the website that I'm looking at right now. It's originally priced at $45. Definitely not cheap. So 45 for flex, 39 for matte. This has 12% zinc oxide and as far as the other ingredient highlights they're actually the exact same as the flex formulation because again they are both part of that sun forgettable family so amazing ingredients in this one as well and it does have a comparable formulation to flex but it's just a little bit creamier so I would also consider it to be medium as far as the thickness goes slightly creamier than flex not quite as liquidy feels very very nice to blend into the skin and I do think that it's easier to work with than flex I don't have to be quite as careful to make sure that I'm not ending up with streaks, a little bit more foolproof. This one I would say is sheer too light in coverage, but I actually feel it leans more light. Once I have two applications on, I don't think it's completely sheer, but I think it looks very beautiful. It has more, again, of a satin matte or natural finish on the skin. I do not think that this is something that is matte. So I feel like that name is a little bit misleading. When we look at something like my shell, that is definitely much more matte than this, but I think this is absolutely beautiful and I really, really love it. Again, this is the type of thing that I look for in a sunscreen where it just enhances my skin, but does not make me look shiny at all. Unlike the Flex, they only have one shade available in this formulation, and I would say it's light to medium for depth of color and definitely does lean warm, but it's not super orange. So not ideal for those that are incredibly fair, definitely wouldn't work if you have super deep skin, but if you're kind of in the middle, I feel like you can get away with it. It's not something that would work for me at all in the winter, I can tell, because it's just, it's too dark, but it balances out well when I have self-tanner on. So. I would love to see more shades in this formulation in the future because it is absolutely beautiful. I actually immediately purchased it after posting this review because so many of you were like, please try it out. And I do really, really love it. I think it's awesome, but I need more shades. All right, you guys, that is my fifth and final favorite tinted sunscreen of the moment. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. You have to let me know in the comments below if you are going to test out any of these sunscreens. Again, I will have everything listed in my description box below. In order of mention, if you are interested in trying something out, let me know which sunscreen that is or is there another tinted sunscreen that you are currently using and obsessed with that you think I need to try out. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and send my channel to a friend thank you so much for doing all of those things really helps me out make sure to stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days but until then i hope you have a great few days